There you go. Okay, good morning. For those of you that know me, when I preach, I start with a little humor and relax us all. So, here goes. It was Jim's 50th birthday, and he was considered to be an old man by his friends. So, to tease him a bit, Jim's friends decided to give him something special for his birthday. They bought him an escort. Well, so the escort went to Jim's home and knocked on the door, and when Jim answered, the escort said, Hi, I'm your birthday present. <laughs> Startled, Jim said, What am I supposed to do with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for super sex, said the escort. Oh, my. Hmm, Jim said. Well, you know what? I'm a little bit cold tonight, so I guess I'll have the soup. <laughs> oh, <laughs> super sex. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> One more. Okay, so, we all make jokes about turning 50. You know what, if you're younger than 50, turning 50 is all about having one foot in the grave and black decorations at your party. <laughs> now, if you're 50 or older, it's all about your parts beginning to fall apart <laughs> and quit working. I mean, your memory, your hairline, your ability to have sex, you know. Today, however, we're going to look at our denomination turning 50 and celebrate in the good things that this 50th birthday means. So will you play with, pray with me, please? <laughs> I've got to get my mouth working here. Dear Creator God, uh, today we celebrate all the blessings that you have provided for our denomination over the past 50 years. Your love, your our spirit, your strength, has moved this denomination in amazing ways and directions. And I pray it will continue to do so for another 50 years. Now, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. Our name is Metropolitan Community Churches, and we're proud to say that we're 50 years old. We're not one of those churches who's afraid to tell their real age. We love to kick, I'm not kicking, scratch and kick. We're 50. 5 0, 50. You know what? For some reason, when uh, we were deciding to do a sermon series this month on uh, celebrating 50 years of Metropolitan Community Churches, that skit popped immediately into my head. And somehow I pictured our founder, Reverend Elder Troy Perry. Now, I don't know if you've met him or not, but for those of you that have, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call him a very nimble man. <laughs> um, and thinking of him doing kicks just like Sally O'Malley and pulling up his pants to his belly button, well, that just got me <laughs> chuckling. Uh, let's see. So, it's humorous to see something like that, because we don't think of 50-somethings as being able to do kicks or splits or wanting to shout out their age so confidently. 50-year-olds are sort of over the hill and lame. Now, I'm 60, over 60, so I can say that. 50-year-olds are somewhat over the hill and lame. But what about churches? While we tend to think of churches that are decades or hundreds of years old as regal and traditional and full of wonderful history, we also tend to think of them as stodgy, filled with tired old rituals, and filled with dirge-like hymns that nobody wants to sing anymore, except like maybe your 85-year-old grandma. <laughs> Yet we view those churches that are only a few decades old as a flash in the pan, something not quite yet proven worthy or even official. Like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, we are critical of too hot or too cold or too big or too small or too hard or too soft, but we never come up with something that's just right. So who would have guessed that 50 years old yesterday, on October 6, 1968, when Reverend Elder Troy Perry held the first MCC worship in his, in his living room in the Los Angeles area in California, that movement of MCC churches would grow from 12 people on that Sunday, 
to over 43,000 members now in 300 congregations in all for 35 countries. In this case, 50 years old has been golden for MCC churches. Now a bit of the history for those of you that don't know too much about the history of MCCs. Reverend Troy was a Pentecostal minister who was defrocked early in the early 1960s because of his homosexuality. After a failed romance and a suicide attempt, he spent several years struggling to reconcile his sexuality and his Christian spirituality. He had come to a place of hopelessness, believing that God didn't exist. But thanks to several angels, his roommate, his neighbor, and her amazing minister friend, Vera, they showed him that they cared about him, and he came to a place of recognizing that God did indeed exist, and that God was with him, leading him. It was Vera that convinced him that God had a ministry for him outside of the Pentecostal church, and that he soon would be pastoring another church. So as Reverend Troy prayed and allowed God's help and understanding to lead him, he saw friends getting arrested for nothing more than being in a gay bar having a drink. Reverend Troy knew that God was calling him to start a new church that would not only reach into the gay community, but would include anyone and everyone who believed in the true spirit of God's love and peace and forgiveness. He wanted to bring God's message to all the gay people who felt unloved and alienated. When his mother even gave him advice to start a church for gay people, without her even knowing he was headed in that direction, he took it as a sign to keep going. And the best way he felt to do that was to start a church service right in his own home. He advertised in the Advocates, which at that time was published once a month, so he advertised in September to start the first week in October. And on that first Sunday, 12 people showed up at his house. The service consisted of a biblical message, a few hymns, prayer time, and his biblical message was, Be true to you. His message was, Believe in yourself and believe in God, for if you believe in yourself as human being first and then... God will be able to help you. You are the created being of God. Do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That was his basic message. So from that humble beginning, the church began to grow. Except for one Sunday, the attendees kept growing every single Sunday. And the church took off. Other, ministry, other ministers soon joined and became involved. Doctrine was developed. A Christian education program was begun. It was a church of doing. Love your God. Stand tall. Walk proud. Love your neighbor as yourself. The church had diversity and was an active growing church whose worship of God came from the hearts. That is the church denomination that we, Metropol Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church, are a part of. We are, indeed, the original open and affirming church open to all people who walk through our doors that believe that God loves and affirms all people, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation or identity, or any other trait. We are inclusive of all people, and we try to reflect inclusivity and diversity in our language, in our worship, and our prayers. We preach first and foremost of God's love for us as God's children and God's acceptance of us for exactly who we have been created to be. And we preach salvation through Jesus Christ. This is how the church began, and this is how we live, believe, and worship today. In our 50 years of existence, our doctrine, our theology, our calling has changed very little. Our message is clear. God loves you, and God has created you exactly who you are. Now, oftentimes here, we hear that message over and over. And just when you think you can't hear it ever again, it strikes home in a new and different way and makes you realize that God has made you a unique and wonderful part of God's creation. Yet there are many in this world, especially GLBTQIA plus youth, 
who need, have not heard this message and need to desperately hear it. The mission of all MCCs is as needed today as it was 50 years ago. We are a vibrant, inclusive, progressive community of faith. Now, being inclusive is not something most mainstream religions, religious denominations or churches can claim today, or even want to be, or believe that they should be, especially if you are GLBTQIA+. But MCC's mission is to be uniquely inclusive of all people. It is to offer a safe and open community for people to worship and learn and grow in their faith. By being inclusive, we reflect the full range of people created in God's image. By being inclusive, we can speak to all the ways that show respect for and honor human dignity and worth. By being inclusive, we develop a broader understanding of God beyond that based on limited human qualities and theological beliefs. By being inclusive, we help to share power and to repair the spiritual harm done by those who have, accepted, who have excessive and unexamined privilege. By being inclusive benefits everyone as we seek to become God's beloved community together. Now what comes from striving to be inclusive is also the use of inclusive language in worship and prayer. Sometimes you may notice that hymns and prayers and liturgy and scripture use language for God and faith that falls outside of the traditional father and him and he, or other male-dominated hierarchical language. You know, Scripture provides a myriad of names, images, and terms for God. Scripture gives us a richer and fuller picture of God. It frees God from the limits that our humanist wants to place upon God. Thus, it's important for us to release God from the boxes of Father and Mother and Creator or Spirit in which we have trapped God. God is beyond gender beyond race, beyond nationality, beyond any culture or time. By no longer identifying God with words or concepts <coughs> primarily or exclusively associated with one gender or one race or one group, we more faithfully witness to the nature of a God who is not limited to one gender or race or one group. The goal of inclusive language is to challenge us to consider and actually care that certain traditional language about God and faith can do harm to some people and can place barriers between them and full participation in church life. You know, in all my years with MCCs, more than once I heard firsthand stories of women who were horribly abused by their father or other males and could never, ever picture God as father. Or people who were raised by such loving, caring grandmothers or aunts or other women that their vision of a loving God is one of mothers. Yet imagery of God and the spirit that is gender-based is truly limiting. As I mentioned, God is beyond gender, beyond race, beyond nationality, beyond any culture or time. So by no longer identifying God with words or concepts that are primarily or exclusively associated with one gender, or race, or group, we faithfully witness to the nature of God. Inclusive language encourages us to rethink our vision of God and make room for any number of understandings of God and scripture that empower us all. Inclusive language does not mean that we must stop using traditional language or images. Rather, it helps us to expand our knowledge and vision of God. Using a variety of traditional and new words and terms allows more people to find themselves connected to God. It is because of, because of our openness and affirming of all, and it is because of our inclusiveness and inclusive language, it is because of our preaching of God's love and acceptance of all, and because of our preaching of salvation through Jesus, that MCCs have another very special aspect. And that is the open table that we call communion. At most churches, if you are not a member or you haven't gone through catechism or confirmation classes, 
you can't take communion. Some churches believe that only those who are truly united in their faith may take communion and be totally united and to be totally united you must be exclusively of that faith. Here at MCC, we believe that God, that God unites us all and calls us all to worship and prayer and communion with God. We believe that Jesus calls and invites all people to an open table. MCCs have always offered an open communion and will always do so. The invitation is extended to all who believe in God and believe in the salvation of Jesus, regardless of what faith you identify with. We prepare and unite ourselves through confession. We ask for absolution and forgiveness through prayer and confession of sins, and we participate freely in the act of supping at the communion table. Communion is unique and intimate at every MCC church, for we all are invited to share in the meal and receive a personal prayer of blessing. We offer communion every Sunday, not just once a month or on special occasions only. And we have the choice to receive communion alone or with a spouse or a loved one, with family of choice or with friends or with those who are near to us. We believe in the priesthood of all believers, such that Holy Communion may be celebrated by the pastor or whomever the pastor designates. And the ceremony itself usually includes the telling of the story of the last meal of Jesus shared with his followers, a prayer over the elements, and then an open invitation to receive. The good news from our message today is that by being an open and affirming church and people, by preaching God's message of love and acceptance, by preaching salvation through Jesus, and by being inclusive to all and offering an open communion table, it is our way of enabling all people to be born into a new life, as our scripture tells us today. It is our way of affirming and looking up to Jesus, to trust in him and believe in his message of how to gain eternal life. It is how we live and work in truth and welcome God into our lives and into the lives of all who believe. Now this is not to say that other religions and churches don't do the same thing. It is to say, however, that we believe that there is a way to do it without excluding anyone that everyone is welcome and embraced, that God's love is extended to all who believe, and that everyone is loved by God for exactly who they are created as. The message that we bring is that everyone is welcome to the communion table to God's feast. And how appropriate it is that this weekend is not only Anniversary Sunday for our denomination, but also World Communion Sunday. And you know, the good news is also that we are all of God's children. And we are all loved by God. We are all created by God with all our unique gifts and talents and spirits. And we are all called by God to be formed and born again by the Spirit working in and through us. I hope that the Spirit has called you, as it did Reverend Troy 50 years ago, to love God and one another, to take care of one another, and to open the gates to bring all people to a fuller understanding of God and Jesus and the Spirit, regardless of their race, gender, sexual orientation, or anything else. It is with God that we celebrate who we are, that we celebrate 50 years for our denomination and all MCC churches who strive to help people walk with God, and that we celebrate the freedom to worship God with no exclusions. It is with God we celebrate Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church in all that we do and in all that we are to those people who need to hear the message most. So go out those doors when you leave, not just today, but every Sunday, and know that you are a unique and very important part of MCC and that your love and service and spirit will be part of the next 50 years of MCC churches. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.